All right, all yours, uh, Issa. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Issa, and I'm from the Australian Centre for Field Robotics. I am one of the uh, lead uh, technical engineers working on the Digital Farm Hand project. Um, so basically, just to uh, well, firstly, thanks, uh, Patrick, for inviting me to speak today. Um, I uh, I hope I'll be able to enlighten you all with uh, some of the things that we're doing. Um, in the uh, mobile on-farm digital agriculture space. So, um, uh, what, what, what I'd like to do is just to give a bit of background about um, who we are and what we do. So, I'm from the Australian Centre for Field Robotics, uh, University of Sydney. Um, so, a lot of the uh, activities that we do are in partnership with industry. So, we've worked in the past with um, uh, companies like Rio Tinto, Qantas, uh, Patrix, um, we have projects uh, working in um, un unmanned un underwater vehicles. We have a lot. We've had some projects in the uh, STEM space, and uh, of course agriculture. Um, and so, with a lot of these activities, we generally work in partnerships with industries, um, and um, and they usually come up with a, a a problem that we need to solve, and then we basically come in and show how robotics can. Um, can demonstrate how this problem can be solved in an effective way. Um, okay, so basically, why agriculture? Um, so, like I said before, we've we've worked in a lot of in, in a lot of areas, and we saw that uh, agriculture is one of those areas that is ripe for uh, automation, uh, especially in Australia, because we have quite a number of issues affecting the agriculture industry. Um, some of them being the um, the aging farmer. So we've got Typically, on average, we uh, we see that farmers are aged, you know, somewhere between 45 to 60 years old, and that and there's no there's no plan of succession. So the the younger generations aren't really interested in um, becoming farmers, joining the the agriculture industry because it's just not seen as uh, as something that's uh, attractive. Um, and so this creates a problem because we don't have the available labour to fill this gap. And that, uh, in turn, that makes things a lot more expensive um, to to get any sort of labour um, in that in that space. Um, and and then, well, you know, I haven't even gone into the space of you know things like climate change, um, pests and diseases. Uh, in Australia, we've got a lot of issues with um, with drought. It's a very dry country. And then, and and the problems go all the way to things like, for example, customer perfection. So if you see on the slide that I have there. Um, so what, what does that mean? So, for example, when you when you go out to your local supermarket super, supermarket and you uh, want to purchase, say, an apple or an orange, you will you will in you will basically go and pick out the nicest the nicest apple, the most roundest orange, and and you will buy that, and you will leave the the apple that is slightly bruised or something that is uh, slightly off color. And you will leave that to the side. And this may not be a problem for us, but it is to the farmer because they need to take all of these things into account when they are producing these fruits. And so we saw that all of these things, all of these factors, um, uh, adds to an atmosphere where we think automation would be uh, ideal to fill in um, and and help plug some of these gaps. Now. Um, some of you may uh, may be aware of some of the studies that have been um, that have been reported about how by the year say 20 I think it was 20, 2050 where the uh, the world's population is expected to rise to about nine billion people. Now um, there are some studies which say uh, food production will need to increase from anywhere between 50 to 100 percent. In any case, it's it's a staggering amount. And so again, robotics is right for this sort of environment. Um, so now I just want to go straight into it. So we've got here. Here we've got some of our agriculture robots that we are currently working with. Um, so uh, so in the top left-hand corner we have Ladybird. Ladybird is a is a platform that is um, targeted towards um, uh, agricultural research, more in the phenotyping sort of space. Uh, in the in the second um, the second robot, uh, so we're going clockwise, clockwise here. Second robot is called Shrimp, and Shrimp is targeted towards the um, uh, the orchard, uh, uh, um, the fruits and um, 
fruits grown, grown on orchards like apples, mangoes, avocados. Uh, we, uh, we've also dabbled in um, some uh, UAV work in the agriculture space. I'm primarily going to be talking today about the, um, the platform on the bottom right hand corner which is called the Digital Farm Hand. And so Digital Farm Hand is a small mobile platform that is targeted towards small farmers, farmers in developing countries and STEM education. Uh, but before I do that, I want to also give a little um, talk about some of um, our premier robot, which, uh, which is called Ripper. So Ripper is targeted to, and, and the reason why I'm doing this is so that to, to provide a bit of context on why we, uh, we, ne we needed to also develop a robot in the, in the, small, far in the small farm space category. So um, Ripper is a platform that is targeted towards uh, commercial agriculture applications, mainly row crops. And so um, here we see uh, Ripper um, on a farm, uh, specifically a lettuce farm. Now, uh, Ripper is a solar electric platform. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, its role is to go up and down rows and collect imagery of the plants that it sees and uh, that are located underneath the platform. As it's detecting these platform, uh, these lettuces, it's able to do things like uh, biomass estimation. So you can see in that um, in that video there that. It's able to then determine where exactly the lettuces are um, uh, in relation to where the robot is. Um, once you know where the plants are, then you can determine where plants are not. So, for, so where, where we detect things like greenery that are not supposed to be there, we can, can, can consider them to be weeds. So you see in that previous um, video there where we had a mechanical tine that was um, weeding out some of the weeds. Uh, we can do things like precision uh, spraying as you can see in that um, in, in the video as well. And here we see an example of um, the platform doing things like soil probing. So, so the idea is that if we can, if we can um, do highly precise, if we can deliver uh, things like uh, fertilizers and pesticides to, cro to crops in, in a highly efficient manner and just de de giving the Sorry. plant just the giving plants just the right amount uh, of nutrients or, or pesticides or, <clears throat> or herbicides that they need, then um, we are also, we're going to basically save on the input costs. And so this is basically our aim, to see how we can improve farm efficiencies on a, on a commercial scale. Now, the technologies that we see on Ripper uh, is quite expensive. And so it's only within the realms of the top, you know, 20, 15 percent of the of the farmers in the global market. So the and it, and it's it's mainly towards uh, you know large scale um, commercial applications. So what uh, what we are what we wanted to do was to reconsider how we can design uh, our platform in such a way that we can take advantage of uh, lower cost sensors, for example, things like mobile phone technologies. How can we utilize that to uh, be able to benefit the small farmer? Um, how can we make use of novel um, low-cost manufacturing techniques uh, to be able to um, create parts that, are, uh, that can be sustainable um, so farmers can maintain their own equipment using things like 3D printer technology or using sheet metal technology, uh, just using sheet, sheet metal and welding technologies, that sort of stuff, um, rather than using um, Highly, you know, highly sophisticated CNC parts, for example. Um, so th these, that's that's one area that we're also looking into. The other aspect is the use of machine learning. So if we can use uh, the sensors on board our, on the on the mobile phone to then uh, incorporate machine learning into the data that we've collected from the mobile phone, can we learn something about crops and plants that? Um, that will be able to tell them whether or not a plant is sick or whether or not it needs additional nutrients or whether or not it's uh, in, affected by a specific type of pest. Um, that's another area that we're looking into. Um, so as I mentioned before in that table of the sort of issues that are currently affecting the agriculture space, um, we find that not a lot of young people are joining the agriculture industry and well, they're just not clearly not, not interested. And so what we wanted to try and do was to try and encourage um, STEM education um, as well as uh, with, with an agriculture context 
in schools. And so what we're trying to do is develop a platform that we can deploy at schools to kind of demonstrate that. Show, we're, we're trying to show students that agriculture may not be what it seems. Like it, it's, not, it's not a case of you know, going out there onto the field and you know, getting your hands dirty. You might find that we just want to show them what the possibilities are. Um, we want to show them that uh, in the future, they may, they may, the, the role of the farmer may be, may be more like a farm manager um, rather than you know going out there and um, getting your hands dirty or something like that. Uh, we we're just trying to show that there there technology is increasingly being deployed on farms and what's the best way to demonstrate that? And so that's the well, that's one of the aims of the project. Uh, we're also trying to do some outreach into the indigenous community in Australia. Uh, to show you know how we can incorporate things like indigenous farming practices um, with technology um, uh, in in rural uh, Australia, and finally uh, we are also uh, taking our platforms out to uh, developing countries like uh, Fiji and Samoa, and uh, in fact we are actually doing trials in Fiji and Samoa uh, sometime in June, and the idea is that. If we can demonstrate that our platform could work in places like Fiji and so on, to show that uh, the activities that we're trying to engage in can be sustainable in the long run, then you know that can only be a good thing to kind of show that yes, if it can work there, then it can also work quite well in Australia. Um, so just to give a bit of uh, history on how we got to the point where we're, we're at. So initially, when we first created our platform. Um, uh, it was it only had two wheels, so we it was called the die wheel, and so it's it's a two wheel system where all of the power and electronics and batteries are all integrated into the wheel. Um, it comes into it comes in three separate pieces and can be assembled out in the field. And the idea is that you, uh, this is a monitoring platform, so you can attach uh, a sensor like a mobile phone onto the platform and collect uh, imagery of crops as it traverses across the crop rows. The frame itself is uh, expandable so you can cater for different um, row crop widths and, and, that's, and that's basically our first iteration. And we learned a few things about you know, the dynamics of the platform and what would be required in future iterations. Uh, we also took the platforms to schools um, just to see how we can uh, teach things like coding, um, yeah, we've got a system uh, where uh, students are able to program uh, little microcontroller modules and then deploy that same code onto our robot uh, to do, you know, pseudo agriculture sort of activities on their on the school grounds. And the idea is that we want to, we not only want to just show how, we don't, we not only want to show kids how to code robots, but we also want to provide an agriculture context to it. Uh, the next thing we did was we, uh, we took the platform to Indonesia where we did our first international trial. Uh, it was in a new, it was in a city called Lembang near Bandung, and and the whole idea of that activity was to get an understanding of what the operation uh, operational constraints were, uh, the logistics involved in conducting these sort of operations overseas, um, and at the same time collect some data of crops and and feed that back to our engineers. Um, we also wanted to get an understanding of what other, like the uh, engineering support uh, and ICT infrastructure that are currently in place in those, in those sort of areas to get an, an idea of what it would take to create a robot that, uh, that would allow for sustainable operations in those sort of countries. So the next set of iteration was um, was what you see on the screen here. So this is this. Uh, so we now we we basically added additional casters to our to our platform, and the whole idea is that we uh, uh, we wanted to add things like a, a mechanical hitch to the back of our platform, and in order to do that, we needed those uh, additional two wheels. And the idea with this platform is that um, we have a mobile phone again a mobile phone mounted on our on our platform it's constantly uh, recording images of our uh, the crops um, as you can see in the video uh, we can extract uh, where the where the crops are and get an uh, get, 
performs Im an Im image analysis on the data to do things, for example, like yield estimates. And and the whole idea is that we want to keep improving on this uh, machine learning uh, uh, machine learning software such that we can do things other than just doing things like yield estimates. We want to look at things like how can we uh, determine whether or not a crop is uh, or sick or healthy. Yeah, just by looking at the um, the the color imagery, doing some analysis on it, doing some machine learning on it, and that's basically where we're at in terms of the development of that. Um, we uh, the the mobile phone is is a crucial part of this sensing payload because you know look the 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 prevalence of mobile phone technology can be seen just everywhere in the world, and so a lot of people now have access to that sort of technology, and so being able to deploy the sort of software to be able to detect um, uh, issues with crops um, from a from a system like that is quite powerful. And when you couple that with a platform that can do things like spraying or seeding or even weeding, um, you have a system that is quite powerful. So what what are the next steps? So like I said before, we uh, we currently have a project where we are doing some trials in Fiji and Samoa and and the idea is that we are going out there to do well we've got three themes that we want to try and cover um, one of them uh, being the actual field trial so we want to actually go go out there look for small farmers test out our robots onto, on, on their farms collect data um, speak to farmers and get an understanding of what what some of the issues are the second theme that we want to try and um, uh, understand is basically the education and training uh, module development. How so? W we have this technology that we've kind of brought into the country. How how do we make this sort of operation sustainable? How can we you know how can we train the locals to use this sort of technology? How do we g g get them to understand what the how useful this technology is to them? Um, and also. Just to give them a better understanding of how this thing works. Um, the third theme is obviously the uh, like on the slides so is is the economic modeling as sustainable and uh, and sustainable strategy. So how can we how can we pitch this robot in such a way that we can show farmers that there is value to be had by operating a system like this? You know what how how can they uh, how, what what sort of uh, what sort of model economic model can we can we demonstrate such that we can say um, okay a farmer if you were to use this particular robot uh, for a certain number of days then this is the sort of yield increase that you'll get um, or or how can how can we develop a way in which farmers can get access to this technology whether I don't I don't particularly see um, I, I can't see at this stage, at least, um, of farmers, uh, you know, each owning one of these things in the in the short term. But possibly, maybe they could all lease um, lease one of these units um, for for use on their farms when they need it. Um, and so these are the sort of things that we're trying to we're trying to get a grasp on. And by going out there and testing it out, speaking to people, speaking to uh, farming cooperatives, uh, speaking to uh, agricultural bodies, um, we can. We can help some, uh, answer some of these questions, um, and so yeah, that's my bit. Uh, so, open to any questions. Over to you, Patrick. <laughs>